Welcome to the first virtual lecture for our introductory class to information systems. My narration won't cover every bullet point, but every bullet point is important. I may move too quickly on some slides if the bullet points provide most of the information, so feel free to pause, rewind, or even fast forward as you see fit. Here we go. So, why should you even care about project management? Well, it's because projects are central to nearly all businesses, and especially IT and IS work. So what is a project? Where does it exist within an organization? Projects are temporary and often involve producing something new. They often exist outside of the existing structure and boundaries of the organization. For example, an IT project usually does not include people only from the IT department. It often includes people from other departments, such as HR, and people from outside the organization, such as consultants or external stakeholders, such as users or the customer. Projects have not had such a great track record. While the number of successful projects is increasing, the number of challenged projects is also increasing. You can't have it all. Projects have three major constraints, time, cost, and quality. You can pick two, but you can't have all three. For example, you want me to build you a new information system solution for your reporting process? If you want it done soon and you want, to co you want the cost to be low, then the quality is also going to go down. If you want it done with high quality and you want it done soon, then the cost is going to go way up. If you want it done cheap and with high quality, then fine. It'll just take a really long time to do it because we can't pay for additional resources to help on the project. Make sense? And yes, this is probably on the test. Now the role of the project manager is one that came about because projects really needed leaders. A project without a leader is bound to struggle and will likely fail. Successful project managers need a certain set of skills as listed here. Leadership is obvious. Integrative planning means that they need to be able to not only coordinate schedules of different players from different departments and organizations, they also need to be able to see how the various parallel and sequential elements of a project are going to fit together within the amount of time allotted to the project. Obviously, team development and communication are important. Technical performance is also crucial, which is why I am having you learn how to program and learn the inner workings of computers and systems. If a project manager does not understand the technical work being done by those quote-unquote lower down in the hierarchy of the project, he or she will find it hard to manage them, develop appropriate expectations, communicate, and garner respect. And this slide's mostly self-explanatory. Let's see, spillover effects means that one part of the project will impact another part. For example, if I am late delivering part of the project, then it will prevent another person on the project from progressing because he or she is dependent on my work. All right, there are quite a few points to remember for project managers, and we're going to go through each one um, just very briefly. And here we go. First, understand the context of project management. You need to know the organization you're in, understand the stakeholders, and understand the scope of your project, your boundaries, and the project's boundaries. Next, recognize project team conflict as progress. All projects have conflict. Often this leads to innovation or more refined outcomes. Not all conflict is bad. Next, understand who the stakeholders are and what they want. Um, you need to understand how to please them without stepping on anyone else's toes and without compromising the project or losing your dignity. You need to accept the political nature of projects. Um, we already talked about politics a bit. There are politics in projects, just like in every other type of organization or work process or pretty much anywhere. You need to lead from the front. Uh, the view is better. Also understand what success means. You may have to endure failures to achieve success. Two steps forward, one step backward, that sort of thing. Uh, success doesn't mean no failures. 
You need to build and maintain a cohesive team. Uh, the social element is critical. If you don't get along, you won't succeed. Enthusiasm and despair are both infectious. A positive leader will engender success. The opposite is true. One look forward is worth two looks back. A great leaders keep looking forward and help their team to do so as well. Remember what you're really trying to do. Uh, maintain focus. It's really easy to get sidetracked in these large projects and you may end up working on some tangential issue uh, to your demise. Lastly, use time carefully or it will use you. There is never enough time. So be scheduled and stick to the schedule. Oh, we were going to have this awesome video break because up till now the lecture's been pretty dry and I'm just lecturing. But since this is all virtual and it's a video anyway, um, just remind me later and I'll show you this video in class sometime. Uh, it's really cool. He does some crazy ring work. Back to the lecture. So, there are many different stages of projects, and the number and name of these stages varies depending on who you ask and what field you're in, but they essentially all go through the same conceptual phases. Discovery, design, development, implementation, evaluation, and maintenance. So, uh, this is called the waterfall method. It's the one we'll be discussing here, and I'll be talking about a little more in depth. But there are several other versions, for example, this one, slightly different names, uh, an extra phase. This one, difficult to read. Um, also, more phases, you have seven here, and different names, but the same ideas. Here's another one, only five stages, um, different names. Here's another one. Boy, there are just so many. Oh, here's another one. They just keep popping up. But, like I said, this is the one we're using. So, the first stage, discovery. Discovery is when you do your requirements analysis. This is when you figure out what the project is going to be and get some buy-in from the stakeholders. Then you design. Now you design it as outlined in this slide. Uh, feel free to pause because I'm just going to move on. Then you develop it. Programming, integration, testing, finding flaws, redesigning, reprogramming, retesting, and so on through the cycle. Implementation is exactly what it sounds like. This is where you implement the system. That is, you put it in place and see if it works with the customer. Probably it won't work, at least not exactly how the customer envisioned it. So you'll need to do some rework. Now, evaluation and maintenance is the longest and most costly part of all IT and IS projects. Often users will realize after using the system for a while that they really would like some other features, or they'll install some new application on their work systems um, or on their computers that doesn't integrate very well with your system. So you'll need to patch the system or include some updates periodically. You will also need to deal with a lot of troubleshooting issues. This is a big job that you might need to have someone completely devoted to uh, shortly after implementation. Ah, oh, <laughs> this was also a very cool video. We'll, we'll watch it another time. Just remind me. ERPs. ERPs are huge. They're big. Hence the word enterprise. They are a massive enterprise and undertaking, whether developing your own or simply implementing and customizing something off the shelf, which is actually what most people do nowadays. Hardly ever do we develop our own ERPs. Uh, these gargantuan systems cover multiple, if not all, facets of information flow in an organization. Here's an example, or a little diagram at least. So it covers finance and accounting, uh, production, customer relations, supply chain management, HR, project management, all across the board. Now since these systems are so big and have such large impacts, you need to have some sort of rollout strategy when implementing them. These strategies can also apply to non-ERP implementations, um, but 
especially when you do ERPs, you need to have some sort of strategy. You may want to pause here to absorb things. So this is, the op this is from the optional reading assignment. Most organizations used phased rollout followed closely by Big Bang. Parallel rollout is much less popular for reasons I'll explain shortly. These next few slides are loaded with information that I'm not going to read to you, so feel free to pause because I'm only going to linger for a few seconds on each. Alright, so when implementing a new system, it's critical to involve users, to involve the customer. Why? Well, because they're the ones who are going to have to use it. And it's best to have them own the process of implementation for many reasons. First, because people in their organization already know and hopefully trust them, unlike you, the project manager. Second, they will be around much longer than you and well after you have left. Third, if they own the implementation, then they will learn the new system better because they will be compelled to teach others to do it or to use it. Fourth, if they own it, they will fight for it to work and to work smoothly. They will know the ins and outs of their organization and possibly of other systems in their organization. So by having them own the process, you will avoid many potholes you could not have otherwise foreseen. So involve users. Once the system is, impl is implemented, you'll find there are several things you may have missed in the development process. This will, re this will require you to patch the system. Patches are updates or fixes to an existing system. You may have noticed that Microsoft sends out updates every Tuesday, or at least most Tuesdays. These updates are called patches. These patches are an ongoing extension of the implementation and development phase. Lastly, project managers need to manage expectations. Under promise and over deliver. I'm sure you've heard that before. Everyone has expectations, and even a good system might not meet the expectations of either the customers or of management. So manage expectations throughout the project. Explain to the stakeholders what to expect. All right, next class. That was pretty quick. Refer to the syllabus to access the links on this slide because you can't click the links on the YouTube video, um, but the, these links are in our syllabus, which is on Blackboard. This computer customization assignment is worth 20 points. Uh, that's a lot in this class. Our video game project was worth, what, 75, I think? And our um, web design, I think, is worth 60, maybe? Anyway, so this is a big project. Um, well, not big project. It's a big assignment. It, it, it's not going to not impact your grade. So put some effort into it. Um, a short list of specs for each system you customize is not going to cut it if you want full credit. Please make it easy for me to grade as well. Uh, this means it should be well organized, and the information in it should be easily accessible. That is, I shouldn't have to search for it or guess whether I'm interpreting your assignment correctly. Um, I hope you have fun with it too. It's kind of like window shopping. Not that I enjoy window shopping, but I know some people do. I'm just going to stop talking now. <laughs>